Blessed be your name. Found in that better place. Oh, I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing. Blessed be the name. Lord be with you. It's nice to see you here today. We had some cancellations by key people. That's so we're thankful that Margaret and Jeremy are joining Steve and Jennifer, but I am thankful for uh, talented people can fill in and do this. Uh, few announcements. Some of you know the Reverend Maynard Hansen. He had surgery on Thursday where they removed part of his colon with a big tumor in it, part of his small intestine, all through a two-inch hole. hole. Isn't that amazing? He's doing, and they could still sew it all up so it all works. So he's doing amazingly well in the hospital, and we're going to continue to be in our prayers. And um, very often, even young people, when they wake up from anesthetic, they're a little confused. It's crystal clear. His mind is just crystal clear. I'm amazed. So I expect him to continue to do well. Of course, the hard part is waiting for things to waiting for the plumbing to start working again, if you know what I mean. Uh, 
So you see, many things rel in life. You also may, some of you remember Harold Bender. He was a member of this congregation here in Rabina for many years. Her no, Rabina died, and then Harold was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, and when he knew his mind was going, he said, it's time for me to move to Kansas City to be with my daughter. And uh, uh, Harold died this last week. They're going to have a graveside service at the Veterans Memorial Cemetery uh, Tuesday at 11, and then the family and everyone will come back here or can just come here for um, some refreshments after that. Let me tell you what's going on tonight. 4.30 to 6 is confirmation mentor, excuse me, 4 until 6, confirmation mentors, mentors and mentees. Then at 6.30, Danny Gutierrez is having a concert here with his um, students from Reed Middle School. Uh, Danny, taped a concert with his middle schoolers in our building and had that on Facebook. And uh, a composer actually found them on Facebook and said, you know, you're doing things that we wouldn't expect middle schoolers to be able to do. And he wrote a composition just for people in, uh, for, for Danny and his students at Reed Middle School. So it's a, uh, I expect it to be a good concert, great concert. I don't think I have anything more to say other than read your messenger. Pastor, does everyone know that we're doing Saturday? What's that now? <coughs> does everyone know that we're doing Saturday service and have heard from the family? Oh, are we doing Saturday service? We are oh, doing I, I heard you service. do it. Okay. Does everyone have a bulletin? Oh, okay. Steve, thank you. All right, we can, uh, let's give us one second. Do we have more than 40 people here today? We're going into the recycling bin to find 40 bulletins that I put there last night. I think we need, we, we need this. Yeah, we need this. Let's just... and a song called Ascribe God. Our, our opening hymn while we're waiting for those to get passed out is actually in our hymnal and it is which number? 456. So just look in your hymnal. If you don't have a bulletin, you can look in the hymnal 456. Our, our, our theme today is the baptism of Jesus, and we're going to look at Jesus' baptism. We're going to look at our baptism. We're going to look at cursing and blessing.
two glass. This is the Epiphany season, and during Epiphany, we are invited to walk in the light from restless sleep and anxious dreams, from shadowy fear and gloomy thoughts, from dark depressions and worried futures. Let us confess our sins before our God of mercy and grace. Holy and merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against our sisters and brothers and against you. We cherish the values of this world. We cause others to stumble. The earth is wounded by our excess. Have mercy, O God. Forgive us, renew us, and raise us up on eagles' wings, that we may do your will with courage and delight. Amen. And now, hear the voice from heaven. You are my own, my beloved. You belong to Christ, and through the power of the cross, your sins are forgiven. God gives power to the weary and strengthens the powerless. He cleansed, he healed. For in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare to you the forgiveness of all your sins and the revealing of God's will. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. It's a, it's a flu season, so you might want to just give fist bumps and elbow bumps or even waves. God's peace. Peace be with you. Lord be with you. O oh God, our Father, at the baptism of Jesus, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized into Christ faithful of their calling to be your daughters and sons and empower us all with your Spirit. 
through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first lesson comes from Acts 19. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the ba baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who has come, who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. The word of the Lord. Do we have enough people that have this peace? This is Psalm 29 by Stephen Pearson. Holy Gospel this morning comes from the Gospel of St. John, the first chapter. Please rise. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. 
Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you. I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I'm looking for my children's hymn. I do not find it. Somebody this morning must have not ever wanted me to use it again. <laughs> do we have some children that will come forward? Haley, come on up. Okay. We have three. Perfect. We're going to talk about blessings today. We live in a world that likes to not bless you. It does just the opposite. And I don't know if you know or remember, for instance, I baptized Haley. At least I think I did. No, I didn't baptize Haley. <laughs> I baptized Haley's sister. So when Haley was baptized, the pastor put a sign of the cross on her forehead and said, Haley, child of God, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross forever. Her name was Kayla? Or Kayla, her twin, Pastor Burtell, put a sign of the cross on her forehead and said, but Kayla, child of God, you are filled with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross forever. Kayla, what's your sister's name? Mackenzie. Mackenzie, child of God. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross forever. That's a blessing. To remind you that you are a child of God. And you know what? We should bless all of our part body parts. For instance, Haley, child of God, I'm putting the sign of the cross on your ears. Do you know why? I want you to be able to hear the gospel. Mackenzie, I'm putting the sign of the cross on your ears so that you will be able to hear the gospel. And Kayla, I'm putting the sign of the cross on your ears so that you will be able to hear the gospel. What else should we bless? How about your mouth? Haley, I'm putting the sign of the cross on your mouth. Mackenzie, on your mouth. And Michaela, on your mouth. Do you know why? I want you to be able to sing praises to God. I want you to know that you are blessed so you can sing praises to God. And then I'm going to put the sign of the cross on your shoulder. Okay? Do you know why? I want you to know that Jesus yoke is easy and his burden is light so we can come to Jesus and trust him and rest in him you are blessed people if you have the Holy Spirit just ask the children of God that's important now we could continue to bless other body parts but we're quitting there all right Let's pray this good afternoon. Gracious God, we thank you for these young people. We, we are thankful that you are a God that blesses.
apasunat. But we are your children. And that you take delight in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, thank you for being here. You can go back to your seats. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. I told you today we're going to talk about baptism, Jesus' baptism, our baptisms, cursing, and blessing. Let me give you an example of a blessing. We live in a, a, a world where you just open the paper, open the editorials in the paper, and there's a lot of cursing going on, not people using barnyard or bathroom language, people not saying things that you can tell they don't want people to prosper and succeed. L let me give you an example. I, I saw an, an ad. This is a, an example of blessing. I saw an ad this week with Kenny Rogers in it. Anybody see that ad? They were singing his song, No One to Hold Him, No One to Hold Them. And I said, Dolly Parton was right. Kenny Rogers did grow into his face. <laughs> Let me explain what, what that was all about. I heard Dolly Parton in an interview where the interviewer was making fun of people that have plastic surgery and said, well, look at Kenny Rogers. What happened to his face? And Dolly Parton said, oh, no, 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 don't say that. I, Kenny and I know one another. He sings with me. And when I saw him, he, he did look different. But I said to him, Kenny, don't worry, you're going to grow into your face. And I go, well, Dolly Parton was right. Now, isn't that a wonderful way of looking at someone? Now, there's some people that feel it's a necess necessity to uh, have that cosmetic surgery done. And uh, a lot of people go, oh, that's all a bunch of narcissism and vanity. Well, Dolly Parton, I think, had the right attitude. That should have been an attitude of blessing rather than cursing on people. Let me give you an example of cursing. The movie Sel Sel Selma came out this week. I haven't seen the film. I've read a few reviews. And one of the reviews had a, an exchange that took place when the character played by Oprah Winfrey went to register to vote. And of course, what the, the movie is about was, of course, the efforts of Martin Luther King Jr. and the three marches in Selma that he took that were trying to get the, 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 the laws changed to allow, in particular, black people to vote, people of color to vote. So the character played by Oprah Winfrey, goes in to register to vote. And there she has an election judge who gives her a civics test. And you can tell this is not a civics test that they gave to everyone. They only gave it to the people that they did not want to allow to vote. And uh, the man says to her, recite the preamble to the Constitution. And then he says, by the way, how many of you could recite the preamble to the Constitution? I needed a little help. Uh, and then he goes, do you even know what a preamble is? And Oprah Winfrey goes, 
we the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect and they stopped her and said how many county judges does the state of Alabama have how many county judges does the state of Missouri have one for every county I imagine <laughs> but how many counties do we have well she knew the answer 67 and then the election judge said, name them. Of course, she couldn't name them. Stamp denied. The character playing um, Martin Luther King Jr. said this about what, what the whole movie was about. As long as I am unable to exercise my constitutional right to vote, I do not have command of my own life. I cannot determine my own destiny, for it is determined for me by people who would rather see me suffer than succeed. My life is being determined by people who would rather see me suffer, curse, than succeed. Bless them. We have a world that loves to curse people rather than bless. Let me give you one more example of blessing. Uh, at our faith and current events class this week, we looked at an article about um, Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City had a homeless problem. Uh, and of course, what do, you, what do you do when you have a problem with homeless people on the street? Well, th their people, uh, creative, clever people, they decided, let's make homelessness against the law. Let's throw them all in jail. So that's what they did. They, they, they had the police go and round up the homeless people and throw them in jail. Next morning, they let them out of jail. They go out on the streets and they're homeless again. They arrest them again. And uh, somebody in Salt Lake City said, well, let's find out how much the homeless people cost us. And they looked at trips to the emergency room because they were living in unhealthy conditions, uh, all the costs associated with uh, caring for the homeless, food banks and uh, homeless shelters and everything else, and they figured it cost them $20,000 a year per homeless person to keep them on the street. And somebody said, th they came up with a plan that said if we house them there and give and hire social workers, case workers, case management workers for them, it will only cost us $7,800 a year. It will save us money. So they built apartment buildings, and pretty nice apartment buildings, to house homeless people. And of course, what did the citizen on the street say? You're actually giving this homeless person, an unproductive citizen of the United States, a place to stay? Are you nuts? But they said, well, it's going to save us money. Isn't that amazing? From $20,000 a year to $7,800 a year. And then once those people were housed, the case workers, they would start uh, working on their addictions and everything else, and people started working and having jobs and becoming productive citizens. Some of them, of course, never will. Uh, be able to have a job. An entire city, it seems, changed from the attitude of cursing to blessing. Now let's look at the baptism of Jesus. Mark doesn't tell us a lot about the baptism of Jesus. Mark, it, it's like he needs to say the gospel so fast, get to the gospel so fast, he just moves right through his gospel. And, but in the 
two short verses, you'll see something amazing here. Jesus is baptized by John. And when he comes up out of the water, or people say when he comes up on shore, the heavens, Jesus sees the heavens open and a voice from God saying, you are my son, my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. With you, in you, I take delight. Some people paraphrase that. With you, I am well pleased. A blessing from Almighty God. Acceptance from Almighty God. Not merely affirmation, but acceptance. We live in a culture, by the way, where we get ready affirmation, do we not? Go on Facebook, like, like, like. I don't know what it means to unlike someone, but like, 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 immediate affirmation. Interesting thing. They say we're more connected to other people than we've ever been in history. Cell phones, texting, emails. But we're more lonely than we've ever been in history. We lack acceptance. Take a step back. Let me read you something from uh, Brian Stoppager. We make the birth of Christ a very important and special event. Don't we make the birth of Christ a special event? Boy, we make the birth of Christ a special event. Sunday school Christmas program that we practice on for three months. Great program, by the way. Christmas Eve worship. Decorate the place all up. We make the birth of Christ a special event. But here's what Brian Stoppergan says. But only two books in the Bible give us the Christmas story. Matthew and Luke. Only two that tell us about the birth of Jesus. Six books of the Bible, at least six, Brian Stoppergren says, talk about Jesus' baptism. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and Romans. In scriptures, it would seem that Jesus' baptism is more important, a more important event than his birth. Perhaps that should be a true for us. Perhaps we should not only give greater emphasis to Jesus' baptism, why aren't we having multi-Jesus baptism services? We should not only be giving more emphasis to his baptism, but to our own baptisms. I'm glad that uh, Rose Holbein is pushing us. She had to really push us because uh, it took some work to put together baptism Baptismal anniversary celebrations every three months. We have them to emphasize, to help our children when they come that your baptism is a big deal. Why is it a big deal? Because we understand it. It's not Pastor Maine who baptizes you. It's Almighty God who baptizes you. Sends him his Holy Spirit. You are my beloved child. With you, I take delight. That's his heart. You don't hear anything else today. See that you are God's beloved child. And he takes delight in you. He's filled you with his Holy Spirit. He takes delight in you. You are accepted. You have a companion in life. Always. Now, why did Jesus need that? He's the Son of God. Well, we know that this way, this baptism marked the beginning of his ministry. When Jesus got up out of the water and saw the heaven split and heard that voice, you are my beloved son. With you, 
on that beast because the spirit drove him into the wilderness. We're going to hear about this first Sunday in Advent. Drove him to the wilderness. And there was tempted for 40 days and 40 nights. With those words from God the Father ringing in his ear, you are my son, the beloved, if you are faithful also. It's important for us to remember that. And when we do remember that, when we do love, Excuse me, when we do live, we understand that we live within the power, the divine power that fills all things, fills our lives, fills all things. We understand that as people blessed and loved by God, given the Spirit of God, we understand that we can endure anything any hardship that comes our way. There's people blessed by God that we are able to share love, mercy, and grace. See, the reason people curse other people, that don't say words that help them succeed in life, the reason they do it is that, well, let me share uh, something from Anthony Janelli. He tells of a, a young woman who had an, a bright, creative, intelligent young woman who had an anxiety problem. So she went to a psychologist, and the psychologist prescribed tranquilizer. Said, take these and come and see me in two weeks. Two weeks later, she came, and the, the psychologist says, well, how have you been doing? She goes, well, I'm the same. Everybody else seems more relaxed. <laughs> the point is, Anthony DeMello says, the point is, we see people through how we think about ourselves. We're more relaxed, tranquilizer, therefore everybody else seems more relaxed. When we can bless people, we feel something. As God blessed people, we can be blessed in return. So if there's nothing else that you need, uh, God's blessed people, then we can step out and listen. So if there's nothing else that you hear today in this sermon, I want you to hear this. You are God's beloved child. His beloved. And he takes delight in you. Amen.
living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God in the was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. When it comes to the prayers for healing and wholeness, I will name some names, and then I encourage you to name others as God places a concern upon your heart. As God's people called to pray for one another, let us pray for the needs of the church, the human family, and all the world. Loving God, in the waters of baptism, you claim us as beloved sons and daughters. Shower your joy on us as we live in your acceptance and delight and share your blessings. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, your spirit, embra <coughs> excuse me, em your spirit embraces all creation, giving life, growth, and beauty. Move us to receive all we touch as your gift and to preserve your earth for the sake of all living things now and in the ages to come. Lord, in your mercy, help us to be your light. We pray for those mourning and coping following the massacre at Charlie Hebdo offices in Paris, France, as well as the other terrorist acts of our nation. We do pray that you help us to protect the freedom of speech. We pray for other places around the, the world where people mourn, following the loss of life in boats and airplanes and avalanches and floods and wars and other acts of terrorism. Let them taste your goodness. Send your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Speak healing and peace to the hearts of those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. We remember especially... Katie Apple, Emily Callen, Opal Grinnell, Mickey Fuller, Jane Alwyn, Tiffany Guile, Randy Greenwood, the Reverend Maynard Hansen, Dustin Jones, Jim Lampy, Pat Morrison, Suzanne Noe, Nancy Newald, Margaret Peterson, Vera Rosso, Wayne Sproul, Mary Thomas, Janice Trotter, Bill West, Terry Wilson, and Ed Wood. Are there any others? Loving God, we give you thanks for the saints of every generation who followed your beloved son. Comfort the grieving, especially the family and friends of Harold Bender and of Jean Apple. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, grant us, O oh God, for the sake of Christ who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us be thankful to the Lord our God. Holy God, creator of all and source of life, at the birth of time, your word brought light into the world. In the fullness of time, you sent your word, born of Mary, to shine in our darkness and to make us your daughters and sons. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me.
remembering therefore his birth and life among us, his death and resurrection, we await his coming again when all things will be restored in him. By your spirit, bless us in this bread and cup that held and nourished by you, we may live as your children, shining with the light of your son who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Every second Sunday of the month, we commune via intinction, which means you will receive the bread or a wafer in your hand, hold on to it, and dip or intinct it into the wine. It happens to be the second oldest known form of communion in history. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. Strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen.
creator. At this table, you have satisfied us with the good things of your grace. Fix our hearts on your mercy and truth, that our lives may reflect your love for all creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is where uh, in this service we normally, on Saturday night, we normally have announcements. But I think I've said everything I needed to say in the announcements earlier. Uh, thank you for your patience. We actually were interviewing something for someone for the position of parish nurse or faith community nurse during the, uh, the time before this service. So I didn't know what to expect when I came out here. So um, uh, sorry for the confusion at the beginning of this service. Very good. Lucy's Christ Care Group that normally meets after this service has been waiting until next week when the weather is even worse. <laughs> Receive this benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that sustains every breath we take, the love of God that gives us courage and strength, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with comfort and peace be with you and all those you care about now and forever. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we welcome, welcome all, all to, to worship, worship. make to disciples, disciples. Hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace, serve the Lord.